So I just bought this 1960 four-door flat top Impala. It doesn't run, it doesn't drive, it hasn't drove in 10 or more years. Interesting story actually. Me and my wife flew back here to visit her parents, but little old me, in my head, I'm thinking, well, maybe I can make a deal. So before we got here, I was on Facebook Marketplace, searching the interwebs, trying to find something cool, and I found this. When we got here, as soon as we got off the plane, we came and looked at this car, I talked to the owner, I bought this thing, and I said, look, I'll have to come back for it in a few weeks. Well, here it is a few weeks later. I flew back here to Wallington, New Jersey to pick this cool old cat up, but the thing about it is, I live in Tucson, Arizona. That's at least 2,500 miles away. I don't know a ton of history about this vehicle. What I do know is that he bought it from a dealership down in Florida and he had it shipped up here to New Jersey to work on it and restore it, but he never did. He never did anything to the motor, never tried to see if it would run, never did anything to the drivetrain. So this drivetrain is truly unknown condition. He, but I'm a little anxious about this trip. I'm also pretty excited because this car is right up my alley. Uh, the 50s and early 60s is my absolute favorite era of cars in this country. The most beautiful cars that were ever made, in my opinion, were made from 1950 to like 1963. So first off, looking at this car, I really love this body style of the car. They had the two-door sedan, which had a post in the middle. They had two-door hardtops. They had four-door uh, sedans. They had four-door hardtops, and they had convertibles, and they also had the El Camino, which was the truck version. Uh, this is a four-door hardtop flat top. Um, I really, really like these flat tops. I really like how these windows curve. They give that real panoramic feel. It's just so space age. It's so of the time. And the front windshield too, how it curves. I love that. What I really, what drew me to this car was the completeness of it. I love seeing complete cars. I say that in all my videos because when you see stuff mangled up, messed up, missing, uh, that's evidence of a struggle. Uh, maybe they found a problem that you will find once you dig into it. So I like to see completion and originality. Paint looks pretty original. I can see some body filler right here. This is Bondo. So somebody tried to do body work, I think. But the quarter panel though is solid. Anyway, coming back around here, we are missing a few things. Uh, we're missing this trim right here, maybe in the trunk. I don't know. We'll have to dig into that. And also my lenses. So uh, we'll have to figure out what's going on with that. But the bumper though, the bumper is nice and straight. We got the balance panels down here that always rot out and those are okay. Those look pretty decent. Um, you know, you can't buy this stuff and when you find it and it's like in good shape and actually usable and repaintable, that's really good. All the trim is there for the back window, all the way down the side. I mean, even down to the Impala emblem, the checkered flag, the spear, the door handles, all the trim that goes around the windows, and these babies right here, these I don't see that often, and usually they're gone. So I think those are worth something uh, to have on the car. No hubcaps, I mean, these wheels look like they're original to this car, but I really would like to have the hubcaps. That would be cool. And coming around to the front, check it out. I just love these front ends. They look so timeless to me, you know, they just look so good. Chevy really hit the nail on the head, in my opinion, with, with these designs. They don't look too bulky, they just look just right, you know. Chevrolet on the hood, all the letters are there. We got a little bit of a chinger right here. We got the spot for the license plate. We got these valance panels down here with the lenses and the lights. All the tires are seeming to hold air. I don't know how old these tires are, but they're holding air. Uh, I don't know what the date code is on these. Oh, wait, here we go. No, that ain't right. Uh, 14 inch tires. I wish it was 15s, but oh well. Uh, let's see. That means 5 of 12? I don't know. Could be from 2012. All I know is these tires are old. Because you can see right here, see how they're uh, dry rotting and cracking? That's not good. You, don't, you cannot go 2,500 miles on that. You're asking for it. Another thing that drew me to this, it seems dumb, but the windshield is not broken. Uh, these windshields are expensive. They're five or $600, and the gasket is another few hundred. So if you did it yourself, you're looking at seven, 800. So the fact that this windshield is here and not busted, uh, and the back one, 
uh, that really means a lot to me in my opinion. This being broke is not a big deal because it's flat. I mean, I don't really care. Flat glass is easy. They can cut that into any shape, but you can't cut that in. You cannot cut a flat piece of glass into that shape, you know? We got the peeper mirror. Oh yeah, baby. We got our peeper mirror going on. Oh, what's this sticker? What's this? Georgia State Patrol, 79 and 80. Was this a state patrol car? What does that mean? March of 79 and 80. Motor vehicle safety. Oh, inspection. It's an inspection sticker. This was not a part of the state patrol. Yeah, if this was part of the police force, you probably would have saw some spotlights right here and on the other side. You know what that means? Easy eye safety plate. Easy eye glass. That was a factory option you could buy. This is green hued glass. The glass itself is actually green and it's meant to reflect or refract UV lights to uh, make it easier on your eyeballs when you're driving. Uh, regular glass would have just been clear. You look at it in the light, you'll see that it's green. Missing our door lock uh, over on this side. Oh well, not too big of a deal. Yeah, let's check out the inside of this thing. Oh, we got a sticker here. What is this? Golf. I always love seeing these old stickers, you know, like dates of when it was serviced. Any pencil marks are, are gone now, but I don't know. This was serviced by Golf somewheres. And you can see these stickers have came off. See these spots here where there would have been stickers, service stickers and stuff. It's looking like we got manual seats, no power seats. Um, but the dash is like so clean. Not in bad shape at all. Let me get in here real quick. So we got our wipers, uh, I think they're electric, I'm not sure what this button does, but I, they might be electric. Got our lights, we got our gauges are all in it, look at those, beautiful gauges. Uh, P, R, N, D, L, so there's no D, 2, and L, so this is a two speed, it's probably a power glide, more than likely. Got our key switch, I don't have keys for this car, but you know, I don't need them I guess. Um, yeah, it feels hooked up to the transmission. Horn button. It's even got a radio. Look at that. Usually these are, these are, um, there's an actual wire that hooks to a wheel that hooks to your station and then uh, usually they freeze up so you can turn this but you won't see this move. So the fact that that's moving, uh, that's not bad. That's a pretty good sign. We might get lucky and that radio will work. Got an ashtray, missing the uh, little sticky thing. Oh well. Impala. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, I decoded the VIN and this was made in, I think, Atlanta, Georgia. Be cool if it was made in LA, but hey, oh well, the car's here, right? I don't care where it was made. Looks like uh, here's our wipers and some old belts. Maybe those will fit. I don't know. Manual windows, no power windows, no power uh, seats, dome lights in it, back seat. Oh, what is that? Oh man. Look, one, two, three, four. Those are the hubcaps. Yes. Those are going to look so good on here. Look at these rockers. Looking so good. They always go right here. So, floor look okay. I mean, at least this one looks all right. I'll have to check out the other ones, but this thing's so low to the ground, I can hardly even get under here. This used to be a wasp's nest. A pretty big one, but not no more. So the trunk is pretty much gone. Um, we got rot holes. You know, oh well, no big deal. Uh, but we have, let's see, we need six lenses total. So, oh, I don't want to lose these screws. Do not want to lose those. All right, so we have a red, a white, a couple more screws, reverse two. We're missing one. But hey, these lights, uh, they go right here. So the lights go here and the lenses go over them, so that's pretty good. I'm glad those are all in there, the housings. We'll have to get a test light when we get to putting a battery in it and see if we got power. We even got the gaskets. These are the gaskets for uh, the lights. Nice. Not totally sure what these are. I don't know. 
Here's a spare tire screw, but that's long gone. The spare tire rim. I kind of wish I had the rim because if I had the rim, then I could put one of these tires on that rim. When I put new tires on the car, I could save one of these tires and put it on a spare rim in case I have a blowout. But oh well, didn't get that lucky. Oh, look, 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 look. The original jack instructions. Wow, that is really neat. Believe it or not, some of these cars didn't come with trunk lights. They would they would be mounted right here on a mercury switch. No trunk light. All right, what do you say we check under the hood, see what we're working with? So this car has the 283 V8 with the two-speed power glide. Some of these came with an inline six. It looks all complete under here. Come on in here and I'll show you guys. A86C, you still see the part number on there. I love that. Looks like we got a four barrel. We got radiator hose, we got heater hoses, we got the whole complete engine, fuel pump, lower radiator hose. We got the water pump, which is free. Uh, this one still has a generator, looks to be an original one, Delco Remy uh, 12 volt generator. Check the power steering. Power steering is empty. No power brakes, we got manual brakes. Now for the moment of truth, we gotta see if this thing will turn over. Oh, it turns. You hear that hissing? That's compression. Let's check the radiator. Antifreeze, yeah. And we do have coolant in it. Let's see what we can smell coming out of the gas tank. Maybe there's gas in there, maybe there's not, but I'm kind of assuming I can't use this tank. <coughs> Hopefully I got the right size battery. I just sort of winged it. <sighs> oh yeah, like a glove. I knew all along. Let's see if we can get it to crank with uh, the key switch. All right, generator light comes on, oil light comes on, the fuel gauge goes to full. <laughs> Sounds like a nice healthy crank too, nice and even. See if the horn works. Oh, no way. Um, I'm going to try the headlights real quick. See if they come on. One pull out. And then two. All right. Yes. Both. Okay, let's see if the brights work. All right, click. What do you see? What do you see? And all four just like that. Man, that makes me happy. And you know what's cool is you can't necessarily see it where you're at, but these two are T3 headlights, which T3 headlights were, uh, those are actually old. Those are actually from the 60s. Uh, they don't make T3s anymore. I know we got more important fish to fry, but I'm just curious if we got power back here. No. No, nothing. I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, right now, let's move to something a little more pressing. Oh man, my spear came off. Oh, whoa, 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 I got a key. Is this the key? It is a key, but is it the key? I also found the uh, door lock plastic. Whoa, uh, wow, we're just finding more and more goodies as we go along, aren't we? All right, let's give this key a shot. Oh, oh, <laughs> dang, you never get that look. I just found that in the floor. I wish they would have used this on the trunk. They drilled out the lock cylinder on the trunk and they could have just used the key if they would have looked in the floor of the car. That's an original piece of the car gone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get the belt that I saw in the car. Maybe it's the right size belt, I'm not sure. Uh, put it on here and tighten it up because uh, if this thing does run, I want to see if it's charging and I want the water pump to turn too. That's the most important thing. Um, 
this is the longer one. I think this one is for the water pump and generator. So um, we'll just go ahead and throw it on there and see if this fits. I'm pretty sure that generator bolt is a half inch. Oh, I think I see one right there. Try and pry it up against the head, not the valve cover. So this light is on and if those points are opening and closing that light should go on and off when you crank it uh, well not like that but you should you're just getting a bad ground what'd you see now that I'm pretty sure the points are opening and shutting um, I'm confident enough to try and see if we can just get it to light off um, we'll take this Ooh, man <laughs> It goes down to the fuel pump and the fuel pump is disconnected from the line on the car so we're not going to pull anything from the tank you guys like my gas can it's actually these were cheaper than the uh, gas tank cans themselves not really sure what that's all about but i just bought this instead of a gas can i got a smaller screwdriver all right i just don't want to go get it i'm lazy leave me alone uh, I think I can see that it was leaking past the floats. Give her a few love taps. Maybe she'll seal up. If not, we're going to have to rebuild this carburetor. It's leaking really bad from this fitting. We might have flooded it before we even tried it, but we can try it anyway. Oh, she tried. Let's try it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so the oil light went out, but the generator light did not. Uh, might not be charging, but she runs. Yeah, baby. Come on. Oh no. I can't kill this battery. I think this carburetor is going to need to be rebuilt because it's leaking really bad right here. And also uh, the accelerator pump. Okay, so I had to run out and get some uh, brake clean because I didn't have any. I think this accelerator pump's not working and so it's not giving it that spritz it needs. Plus it's been a little bit now, so it might, if it was flooded, it's evaporated. Bad news is, is it's still coming out of this hole a little bit but good news is is I don't see it coming out of the uh, jets anymore now I think the floats finally started to seat okay I want to hear this thing run on its own before I leave tonight that was the goal for today
not 100% sure why it's doing that. Gen lights on. Oh, <sighs> alright. Well, she's doing her thing. Kinda. Well, I got done what I wanted to get done today. I wanted to see if it would run, and it will run. I think it's hitting on all eight. Uh, motor sounds uh, healthy. Uh, that up and down stuff, I think that's a carburation issue. That's not an internal engine problem. I think it has oil pressure. I wish I had a gauge. It's only a light. I need to figure out that charging issue before my battery goes dead. I'm just, <laughs> you know, using what's in the battery. I got to replenish it somehow. Uh, maybe I call dad and um, see what he has to say about it. Those old generators are pretty tough. It could be the regulator, could be the generator, could, I don't know, you know. But since I'm on the East Coast, I think I'm gonna retire for the evening. It's getting dark, I might go get some uh, pizza. We will continue on this journey tomorrow. So it's officially day two. Uh, I gotta figure out why it's surging like that. A big deal we gotta get straightened out is that generator situation. It's not charging and I don't have a jump pack. I have got to have some sort of charging. So after a few seconds of checking, uh, I think I might have found the problem with the generator. If you look on the back of this generator, let me get you guys in here, okay? Let me show you. So as the generator is turning, see this black piece right here? This goes against uh, the armature, and this is what carries the current to the car. It's spring, this arm is a spring tension that pushes that brush uh, up against that armature. See how this one's tight? And see this one? See how that's loose? This brush is, it needs to be pushed up against that armature to carry current. So I really hope to God that's our problem. That's like an easy fix. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get some spring tension put back on that bad boy. See down in there all that crap? Look at that. Those right there, those two things are jets. Those are probably plugged. Look at all that crap. No, no, no. So we might have got it figured out. I cleaned these bowls out and now they're looking pretty good, pretty clean. Uh, I cleaned those two jet holes out right there and then I took these uh, these little housings off, these three screws, you can take this off, clean the idle circuits in there, clean the circuits in here, uh, put those back on, and uh, the accelerator pump is, is working. It's actually working, it's squirting fuel right out here. I'll show you how that works. Fuel comes in the bowl, fills this up. Oh, come on. You hit the pedal, this goes down. See that? Well, we're squirting out of one. We were squirting out of two. Have to see what's up there. It's supposed to squirt out of both of these. And on she goes. And now we're gonna tackle this generator problem. Since we sort of know what the issue is, um, I got all the bolts out and we're just gonna see if we can get in there and somehow get spring tension put back on that brush. It's spring loaded, I'm pushing it back. Well, you see this one's just sort of dangling in the wind. Turn it over here. See, sort of, it needs to be uh, 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 pushing up against that thing, helping me out, come on. These bolts should go like all the way through the housing.
very, very easy. So I went to the local Ace Hardware shop here to try and maybe MacGyver something together or find a few springs that are rogue that I can maybe make work. I would need like a generator alternator repair shop to even know what I'm talking about, a little spring like that. It, no one's open. Ace Hardware was closing at two, barely got in the door before they closed. So this was my original spring and I just bought a few uh, whatnot springs for 20 cents a piece because I thought, well, maybe I can just cut it and bend it into what I need. And so I had three and I cut one up and I bent it up. And if you see it in there, I bent it to what I needed. So now, see the bottom, how I hooked it around the anchor on the housing and I, I bent it to where it would go through this arm. And so now that should hold our uh, brush in. What I want to do after I get this on, I don't want it to leak out of here anymore. The generator should be charging with the carburetor clean. It should run smooth and then we can finally move on from this mess on to another one. Well, fuel pump's on. I don't see it leaking out of the main lug on the carburetor anymore. Let's try this. parking brake was on, that's why it dies when I put it in gear. Alright. Well, she's sputtering a little bit, but things are a lot better than they were yesterday, I'll tell you that. No more surging. Uh, we got some spitter spatter. But it's running on its own. It's not dripping fuel anymore. I want it to run for a little bit, get warm. My fix worked. 12.7, 12.8, and I also want it to run to charge that battery back up. I've been, uh, I've been abusing it pretty bad, so she's smoking a little bit, she's farting a little bit, but hey, what do you want? What do you expect? I think it's actually starting to cycle water now. That's a good sign. Let's look at the temperature, see if the temperature gauge is working. Yeah, temperature gauge is reading. Yeah, temperature gauge is reading. That's good. Yeah, that's going to be very important. Now that the oil is uh, nice and hot, I'm going to drain it. And while the front is in the air, I'm also going to look at the front brakes and repack uh, those ball bearings. It's not milky, it's just hot and thin. It smells a little gassy, old gassy. Yeah, see how thin that is? Almost like water. I think there's some gas in there. So these brakes, they're pretty thin as they need to come off because this, these wheel cylinders need to be replaced anyway and I knew that they would look like this. After so long that brake fluid turns into powder and that's, 
I mean, imagine if I would have just came and tried to put brake fluid in that master cylinder. I mean, you know, you can't drive 2,500 miles on that. That is totally, that's gone. That is absolutely done. Shoes, wheel cylinders, and brake hoses. I can see it getting cracked right there. Good thing I brought a one inch wrench because this piece, oh, it's actually got some sealer on it or like uh, some anti-seize on it actually, wow. Uh, anyway, this is a one inch nut that holds the wheel cylinder on. So that was my biggest wrench and I didn't want to use a crescent wrench because that one was on there pretty tight. So I'm glad I glad I had that. But look at this wheel cylinder. I'm about to show you this thing is, ab this thing is crazy. Look at that. You think that I was going to rebuild that here where I'm at? Yeah, right. Fat chance. Now this brake line I'm going to replace, but I am going to save this copper crush washer. This is what seals the wheel cylinder and the brake line is this copper washer. And I'm telling you, the new ones will leak. And these old ones, you can use again and they will have a less probability of leaking, believe it or not. So I always save those copper crush washers because those ones, these are thicker and they're usually better. So I'm at kind of a weird stopping point. I would have liked to have got all the front brakes done and put back together, but it's like almost seven o'clock getting dark um, and I got tools literally everywhere. So I want to clean up my mess and we'll pick up on the brakes uh, tomorrow morning. And we'll pick up on the brakes tomorrow morning. All right, well, good morning, guys. It is officially the beginning of day three, working on this 1960 Impala uh, in the back lot of a New Jersey warehouse. Um, today, we have a lot to do still before this thing is ready to make a 2,500 mile road trip. Um, right now, I'm working on brakes, shoes, cylinders, hoses, master cylinder. That's what we need to do to get these brakes going and bled. And then once the brakes are bled, we still have to switch the gas tank out. Uh, before I got here, like I said, I'd ordered a gas tank. It was only like $163 on Rock Auto. I thought it was totally worth it because I need that capacity so I'm not stopping every 100 miles with a five gallon or two five gallon jugs. I'm probably gonna do these brakes and put them on and grease these bearings and then get back. Because uh, this job is so filthy, I can't keep turning the camera on and off. Okay, so we have kind of an issue right now. Um, I got these hubs together. Um, listen to this one. Can't even hear it. Beautiful. Come over to the other one. Remember, the brakes are adjusted totally in. You should have no interference. <coughs> hear that? That bearing in there, that inner bearing is toast. You can't buy them at auto parts houses because what they'll sell you, the listing they show is a taper bearing, a conical taper bearing. These are actual ball bearings. Um, so that <laughs> that's one thing I really didn't want to go wrong because um, that's not an easy fix. Well, it is an easy fix, but actually finding that ball bearing, that's, that's the hard part is actually getting your hands on that. That's why it's uh, not an easy fix. I wiped the surface off. You can see how it's it's kind of pitted in there. And the bearing too, where's the bearing at? Yeah, so see that? See how pitted that those balls are and those holes are elongated. See how those holes are real wallered out? 
and those bearings are about to fall out of their holes this is not usable this this won't go anywhere and uh, yeah this kind of sucks so we're in a sticky situation I put the good bearing from that wheel on this hub and put it together to see if the races were good enough to hold a good bearing and it's still scrapey and scratchy uh, we're screwed in a sense uh, this this is this tire this wheel is not going anywhere this side is not going anywhere without new races and a new bearing and none of the parts houses carry it uh, Cantor if you guys are familiar with Cantor Cantor car parts they sell classic car parts they are not open to the public but I'm actually close enough to Cantor auto parts and they have the bearing it's like 40 minutes away the thing is is they only have the bearing not the races they don't even sell the races and I need the races um, so I got on Rock Auto, apparently there was a set, races, and the inner bearing, so I'm having it overnighted to me to put on tomorrow. Uh, there's nothing else I could do, I can't get it in town, there's n I, I gotta overnight it. Let's just cross our fingers and hope and pray that that is the right bearing and race. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go eat some lunch, and that brings me to the sponsor of today's video. This video is sponsored by Factor, which is a great meal solution. If you're too busy to cook, but you still want to make sure you're eating well, Factor has premium ingredients like pork chop, pork tenderloin, turkey, butter chicken, and much more. I think I'm going to have the pork chop today, though. You can choose from over 34 different dietitian approved meals that are ready within 7 minutes in an oven and 2 minutes in a microwave. It also saves my wife time in prepping and cooking meals for us. Tastes good. If you're trying to budget out and save money on eating out at restaurants, takeout, and fast food, that's my downfall is fast food. You should definitely consider Factor. In the long run, it's cheaper and quicker because the meals are ready in two minutes. Factor does three things for me. It saves me time in cooking and going out and preparing. It saves me money from not going out so much. Because these meals are dietitian approved, let's be honest, I'm not eating so much garbage. But you should head over to factor75.com or click the link in the description below or in the pinned comment and use code THETRAVISB50 to get 50% off of your first box. But now I can hurry up and get back to work. So while we're waiting for that to come in the mail, we're just gonna have to keep pressing on. Ugh. See what the story is with these back brakes. All right, I'll get back with you on that. <laughs> so I finally got the uh, drum off, and just like the fronts, um, it's just dust in there. And uh, yeah, this car hasn't been on the road in a long time. I know uh, it was transported up here five years ago, but this thing hasn't been on the road in probably 20 or 30 years. Uh, just by looking at these brakes, there's no possible way. Look, I haven't opened these up, but there's just nothing. Another indicator, it's been sitting a long time. Uh, I usually try to adjust the brakes in because uh, sometimes the shoe lining, when you brake a lot, it wears, a, it wears the drum and then the outer ring of the drum is still unused and so you can't get the drum off uh, because the pad is wore a line inside the shoe and I can't adjust this in because it's frozen solid uh, so that tells me it hasn't been adjusted in well 15 20 years and getting it off I, I took so much force to get it off that the the linings came off with the drum so yeah Whew. all right the rear brakes are finally together after a little bit of hassle and convincing. So the rear hose is on, shoes are on, wheel cylinders on, all the hardware is on. These were frozen solid, I got those unstuck. Going around here to the driver's side, brakes are together on this side too. So tomorrow, I didn't get to the gas tank today because of that fiasco with the ball bearing. That threw me for a loop. I uh, spent some time trying to figure out what I was going to do about that, trying to call around, see if I could get one. That ball bearing is coming from Rock Auto. Well, I'm gonna finish this up. Oh, and check it out. I got two of the tires put on the rims. Uh, the guy I bought the car from was nice enough to take those down and have two of them put on while I have the backup in the air. So I'm gonna adjust these brakes, get everything cleaned up, and I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow for day four. 
Welcome to day four of the 1960 Impala. I wanted to get to the gas tank yesterday, wasn't able to reach quite that far, uh, but today that's what we're starting with. I finished up the brakes last night, got the rear brakes adjusted, so uh, it's all about fuel right now. I want to get the new gas tank in here. I want to fix the rubber hoses in between the metal fuel lines because those are rotten and I have a mechanical fuel pump I want to put on the block so the next time I run this it'd be kind of cool to be able to run it from the fuel system it should be running on oh yes so I've been soaking these bolts down for days since I got here these strap bolts and oh don't do that on me um, it's about to come out of there because these strap bolts they have really long ends on them and they get rusted and they don't want to come apart um, and another big reason I'm doing the gas tank you're saying well why don't you just put a few you know jerry cans in the uh, cab and just run it like that well, I thought about that, and I would have done that if I wasn't going so many miles. You got to think, if you're getting 12 miles to the gallon and you have two, two five-gallon tanks, you got 10 gallons, 12 miles to the gallon, that's 120 miles in between stops. And just to be safe so you don't run out of gas, sorry it's windy, it, just to be safe so you don't run out of gas, you're going to want to probably stop every 100 miles. Stopping every 100 miles on a 2,500 mile road trip is not very practical. get a good look at this sending unit <laughs> oh man yeah yeah this is toast this needed to be done look at that this is stuck well now it's free this yeah this float goes up and down to read your levels of gas but I mean I don't know if it's gonna work or not but look and we would have never got gas out of this anyway. It's totally plugged up. We'll have to unplug that and try and blow through it. Yeah. After looking at all the evidence that I've seen as I'm taking this car apart, I don't think this thing has been on the road in 30 years. I think I said that when I was doing the brakes, but this just, this just kind of proves it. There's no way this thing has been driven at all and 20 or 30 years so wish I had like a drill bit all right I think I have everything ready I got the sending unit cleaned out and installed in this new tank I got a new hose coming from the frame going to this straps are ready so hopefully it fits One installed gas tank. I might put a piece of baling wire around this neck because I'm not sure about the uh, structural integrity of uh, this and when you get a bunch of weight in there might put stress on that and so uh, I'll put it around the neck and 
maybe wire it somewhere in the trunk and then coming around here to the back of the tank oh, got the sending unit in and the wires hooked up to the sending unit you know for whatever that's worth and then the new hoses uh, hooked up from the frame to the tank and now I've been draining the oil out of this differential because while it's up in the air I want to put new differential fluid in it and uh, bleed the rear brakes um, but first we got to put the master cylinder on to do that We can switch from the jerry can to oops, we've got gas coming out the top to uh, the real deal. Ah, come on. So here's where we're at. The fuel system should be good to go now. The gas tank's all in, all the rubber lines, the fuel pump is in. I uh, put the master cylinder on, bled all the brakes, all the brakes are bled, and now what I'm doing is, the last thing I'm going to do today is pound the race out of that hub, because I got an email saying that my bearing and races were delivered to where I'm staying at, so I'm going to take them to where I'm staying, make sure that they're correct, so if they're correct, we can start out bright and early tomorrow, fixing, that, uh, fixing them ball bearings in that hub, and then after that, it's just tuning the engine to make it run a little better and we should be off. Oh yeah, and the uh, rear lights. So the, I, I still haven't fixed the rear lights, brake lights, running lights. We're gonna have to figure that out, but that's nothing compared to what what's going on here with this hub and all this other stuff, fuel tank. So, whoo, it's been a lot. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like. It's a lot of work. You know, I've uh, never actually done this before, like punching races out of a drum or a hub. I've it's my first time actually attempting this. Well, there it comes. Now that that's out, I'm gonna clean my mess up, and I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow for day five of the 1960 Impala. So my new bearing came last night. This is the old one. And uh, for all intent and purposes, when I'm looking at these, they look pretty much the exact same. If you look at the, if you look at the width, they're the same. And this race right here, these look the same. I'm pretty confident that this is going to work. The measurements seem to be the same. I'm very happy this came. I'm very happy that it is correct. Um, so goal now is to get this packed, put this side on, get the tires on, and get the car set on the ground so we can keep this thing moving. Because by the end of today, I would like this car to be mostly ready to go by the end of today. That's tires on, brakes adjusted, brakes working, and I need to figure out the taillight situation why are my taillights not working? I was checking last night 
and the fuse block is the fuse block for the brake lights. Uh, I'm sorry, the fuse block the tail lamps isn't getting power and I think it gets its power from the headlight switch so I got to figure that out because all the wiring looks to be good it doesn't look eight and a half the motor last time I ran it still didn't sound 100% so we still have some things to do but I'm trying to be ready by the end of today <clears throat> that looks like that fits right that's awesome and then this race goes down in here I gotta figure out a good way to pound this in. Now I'm going to move on to the engine and see if we can get it to run better. Um, Cause last time I ran it, it was kind of missing and I haven't ran it in a few days. So just until it can get some gas. All right, let's give this a whirl. Do, 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 do. I see some gas coming through the fuel filter. I know we're getting there. So it's got two cylinders that aren't firing. As it's running, I was taking the spark plug wires off of the distributor cap, and you can see. One back there, and there's another one back there. So I'm gonna check those cylinders out. So these are the spark plugs from the two cylinders, number five and seven, that are messing up. Uh, this one looks pretty bad and smashed in, but I'm not sure why this one's not working. It, it looks okay, but uh, we'll just go ahead and put two new ones in it, and hopefully that fixes our problem. So I figured out my light situation, I'm testing out my lights right now, been testing them. Uh, I wasn't getting power to the tail light fuse, so I bootlegged power from somewhere else. And now we got turn signals and we have running lights. I had to tape this up because I don't have a lens for this. But yeah, all the lights work, the reverse lights, the tail lights, the turn signals, and the brake lights and the headlights. So we are totally legal beagle. So what I want to do is, is I haven't driven this thing at all. I don't even know if it gets second gear. I want to go eat some lunch. We'll drive this car to go get lunch. I want to go get gas in it too. I only have a few gallons in it. So, so let's drive it for the first time in probably 25 or 30 years. After seeing what I've seen, 25, 30 years. work. Power steering works. Man, take a look at her out in the open for the first time. Man, it's a good looking car, man. 
That's a good looking car. Brand new set of shoes on her with the skinny whites looking fine as wine. So I think the fuel gauge came around and maybe it's working. Uh, Speedo's trying to do something. I think my temperature gauge works and the uh, gen and oil light obviously work. So first thing I want to do is hit a gas station put some gas in this thing. Oh yeah, she gets second gear. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Yes. I heard it. I definitely heard it. We're not going 50, but you know. So I'm filling up, probably the first of many, but uh, I'm in New Jersey and this is kind of cool. See that booth right there? New Jersey and I think one other state are the only states in the union that require a gas attendant still, like, like this is the 30s. But yeah, it's a law. They gotta have a gas attendant to pump your gas, but I don't know, I don't want them to pump mine. I just got out and started doing it anyway. Oh. Uh, it took 12 gallons. I put a couple gallons in it. It's probably a 15 gallon tank. All right, let's keep this show moving. Let's see if the gas gauge started working. Oh yes, yeah baby. <sighs> well, I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. We got this thing as good as we can get it where it sits. So it's up to this thing to get us 2,500 miles back home. And I got a few stops along the way that I think you guys are gonna like. There's some historical things I wanna see that I wanna show you guys. So our first stop is down south in Pennsylvania. stopped at a gas station our first stop it took seven gallons I think I've driven it I don't know probably 30 some miles uh, I'll get a better idea about what the gas mileage is once we get some more miles under our belt but um, let's continue on our way to Bethlehem Pennsylvania she's not overheating I unhooked the speedometer because it's making so much dang noise gas gauge is trying to work but not working quite right but my main concern is is that we're not overheating I'm happy about that so Let's keep her going. I had to stop. You see that warehouse right there? I passed it and it said Cantor Products, Packard Parts, Cantor Products. I think that's the Cantor Warehouse. There's a bunch of parts for uh, classic cars they sell in that warehouse. It's kind of cool. All right, so we've officially made it to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, first 100 miles down. She did pretty dang good. It still has a slight stumble in it, but it's good enough to ride on. We gotta get this show on the road. And if you recognize those right there, this is the first stop along the way. And I wanna show you guys a little bit of this because I've been wanting to see this for a long time. It's the abandoned and repurposed Bethlehem steel plant. I've read about this in books before, and I think it's just a fascinating story of American might and power. If you want to support the channel, subscribe, like, leave a comment. And if you want to support the channel in a more direct way, I've opened up channel memberships. There's two different tiers. There's a couple of cool little perks in there that you guys might like. So make sure you check out the channel memberships. That would help me out. It helped me get home. It'll help me keep making more videos just like this. Make sure you keep checking the channel for part two of driving this 1960 El Camino over 2,400 miles back to Tucson, Arizona.